Would you like to start four minutes early? Okay. All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to services. It's nice to see most of you. Most of you back. I was trying to think of a good, good thing about these masks. The only thing I could think of is if you've got a breath problem, now we don't have to tell you. You already know. So that's a, a little blessing for us. Please silence your cell phones as we prepare for worship and please um, disconnect any devices from the church network and turn them off because we're going to be live streaming this morning and uh, that'll disrupt our bandwidth. We wanted to announce that Everett Clare, the father of Elaine Hopkins, passed away last Friday, May 1st. The memorial service will be live streamed via the Weed Corley Fish Facebook page. Friday evening at 7 p.m. We'd also like to let you know that Jan Smith has been placed under hospice care and is back at her daughter Sherry's home on Independence Drive. The address is in this week's prayer list and on the website on Light Post under the Files section. Also want to let you know if you would like to contact her via video chat, they have that set up so that she can talk to folks. If you'd like directions on how to do that, contact Cody or the office for uh, directions on how to get a hold of Jan. Remember to see a worship flyer and a prayer list available in the back for the list of the others that are in need of our prayers and calls, et cetera, at this time. I'd like to read a card from the Siebert family. Dear Southwest family, the family of Vivian Quarter would like to express our heartfelt thanks for the many cards, calls, flowers, and food and prayers during her illness and her passing. Truly loved serving along all of you here at Southwest since 1979. The outpouring of care and concern for her and the care of her family simply and completely mirror the words of Christ in John 13.35. You, your love for us shows you are Christ's disciples. We cannot thank you enough. The Keith Siebert and Tina family. Activities for the week? Not a whole lot. Uh, Bible class and Sunday evening services will be online only. Wednesday evening singing and Devo will be this Wednesday for all ages. So we are meeting on Wednesday. Somebody shake your head. Okay. If you have any needs, please call the office or one of the elders and let us know how we can be of assistance. Morning's song leader will be Parker Webster, and I'd like to open this. Actually, before I do that, sorry, pause. I want to talk about how we're going to do communion, um, and there will also be instructions ahead of us of serving communion this morning. Communion is going to be a little bit different. If you haven't seen them yet, we have these little cups that have the wafer or the bread on the top, where you'll peel the film from the top for the bread, and then a second layer for the fruit of the vine. A prayer will be offered before uh, you partake of the bread and of, and of the cup like we normally do. So just pause, uh, we'll do the, the bread prayer, take the bread, we'll pause, then we'll do the, the fruit of the vine prayer and, and, and et cetera. The men will pass out the supplies uh, when the time is right. And uh, a prayer will be offered for contribution. The man will, men will pass down the vacant rows in front of you. You don't need to grab any trays or anything. You can put your offering in place. All right, having said that, let's open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we're extremely grateful to be here this morning. We're grateful for your creation, for the time that you've allotted for us this morning to worship again together. Thankful for the blessings that we see around us every day. We pray that we focus on those. We pray that we move forward with haste. Thankful for your son. We're thankful for your church. And again, we're thankful for this time this morning. We pray that we do all in accordance with your will. Good morning. We're going to begin singing song number 531. 531. Praise the Lord. We'll sing the first, third, and the fourth verses of this song. Praise the Lord, ye heavens adore him. Praise him, angels in the high. Sun and moon rejoice before him. Praise Him, all ye stars of life. Hallelujah, amen. 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 Praise 
praise the Lord, for he is glorious. Never shall his promise fail. God hath made his saints victorious. Sin and death shall not prevail. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Praise the God of our salvation. Host on high is far proclaim. Heaven and earth and all creation. Lord, and magnify his name. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Next song will be song number 660. 660, there is a habitation, and after this we'll be we'll have an opening prayer by Brother Brett Gerhardt. We'll sing the first, third and fourth, fourth verses once again. There is a habitation built by the living God for all of every nation. To seek that grand abode. Oh, Zion, Zion, I long thy gates to see. Oh, Zion, Zion, when shall I dwell with thee? No night is there, no sorrow, no death and no decay, no yesterday, no morrow, but one eternal Our most righteous Heavenly Father, we are thankful, Father, to be able to come together today, enjoy the blessings of gathering together, offering up our praise to you, the creator of this universe, offering up our worship, seeing each other, uh, able to enjoy the strength and the encouragement that comes from our gathering together as a family of your people. Father, we are mindful of this time of unique situations that come about in the past few weeks. We pray, Father, for all those who have lost loved ones, all those who have 
had health difficulties in recent time, especially several of our own number here born with them. We ask that you would hold their hands up and comfort them. We uh, pray for some father who are now struggling with health difficulties, but we're thankful for others who have recovered and we pray, Father, for all those who have been alone through this difficult situation. We look forward to and we long for, Father, the time when we can gather together freely again. Pray your blessings on our country, on our leaders. We pray for wisdom and making decisions. We pray most of all, though, Father, that we would continue to remember even when day-to-day -day circumstances are difficult, are sometimes frustrating to us, we pray for wisdom, pray that we would keep a spiritual outlook first and foremost in our lives. We are thankful, Father, for the Bible studies that we have been able to continue in. We're thankful for Logan and Steve and Cody and others and their efforts to enable us to continue to study your word together. We're thankful, Father, for the book of Isaiah and for the insight and the comfort that it gives us knowing that your people have struggled with much more difficult circumstances in the past. And you are faithful, Father. We know that you're in control. We know that you rule in the kingdoms of men. We pray, Father, for wisdom and the insight to be able to keep our trust in your word and know that you will keep your promises that we can read and study your word and continue to walk in it and point others to it. Father, we pray that we would be able to look for opportunities to be a positive spiritual influence in the lives of others around us. We pray for boldness and for spirit of willingness to reach out to others, to point them to true Christianity, to encourage others to investigate your word and see that it's true. Pray your blessings on our worship and on our gathering today. We pray for all those who were not able to be here together with us. Pray that we would grow stronger and grow together more as congregation of your people ask your blessings on us do that and all of these things pray you be with Cody as he preaches to us today we're thankful we can gather together around the table and offer up our our gifts to the work of the church at this place thank you for all things father we Take a moment to remember the death of our Savior. We'll sing song number 440. My Jesus, I love thee. We'll sing all three verses of this song. 440. My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. For thee, If ever 
justice now in mansions of glory and in blessed delight I'll ever adore thee in heaven so bright I'll sing with the glittering crown on thy brow if ever I loved thee my Jesus is now. The communion will be served differently today. The unleavened bread and the fruit of the vine are packaged together. Our men will pass out the communion supplies in the cup tray, in prayer will be offered for the unleavened bread. All partake at this time, in prayer will be offered for the cup. All will partake at this time, men will pass down the vacant aisles, collect these supplies, prayer will be offered for the contribution, and men will pass down vacant aisles, take the collect. Today, to prepare our minds for the Lord's Supper, I'll be reading John. 6, 47, 59, like the following. That's John 6, 47, 59. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which comes down from heaven, that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. I will raise him up the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, I live because of the Father. So he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead. He who eats of this bread will live forever. These things he said in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for your Son that came to this earth, died on that cruel cross for our sins, Father. Let us take this emblem of his body, and as we partake of it, let us meditate on what he went through, Father. We ask all this through your Son's name, Jesus Christ. Now let us pray for the divine. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. We ask your blessings and we give our thanks for this fruit of the vine that represents the blood that Jesus shed on the cross. Thank you so much for his sacrifice and his name that we Now that the Lord's Supper has been concluded, we'll now take a break. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the blessings, spiritual and physical. Pray that whatever is given today is given with a cheerful heart and that it's used for the kingdom.
you are using a songbook this morning and you would like to mark the song of invitation, that song will be 520, only a step, 500. For the lesson this morning, we're going to sing song number 501. We're going to sing um, all the verses. And let's stand as we sing this song. Oh, worship the King, O oh, glorious above, and gratefully sing His wonderful love. Our shield. It breathes in the air, it shines in the light, it streams from the hills, it descends to the plain, and sweetly distills in the new and the rain. Frail children of dust and feeble How tender, how firm to the end, our Maker, Defender, Redeemer, and Friend. Please be seated. Morning scripture, Psalm 122. <clears throat> I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your Jerusalem is built as a city that packed together. Where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, the testimony of it, give thanks to the name of the Lord. Thrones are set there, judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the people, they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls, charity with For the sake of my brethren, companion, I will now say, because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. Good morning, everyone. It is good to be here. And uh, in case you're wondering, I have my mask. And before I get closer than however far away we are from each other right now, I'll put it back on. So no worries. And uh, speaking of masks, I appreciate what Jamie said about trying to find something positive about them. I'd been thinking the same thing. And then when I showed up to the building this morning, it finally hit me when I saw Matt Gibson. And I thought to myself, wow, that's actually an improvement for him. <laughs> and I don't even get to see his facial expression now because he's hiding it. Uh, sorry, Matt, I'm just trying to get things back as much uh, to normal as possible. <laughs> but it is good to be here, and it's good to see all of you, even Matt. I hope you have your Bibles turned open to Psalm 122 this morning. The psalm begins, as Carson read for us a moment ago, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. This psalm, Psalm 122, is, uh, or it's, it belongs to a collection of psalms known as the Songs of Ascent. 
These songs of ascent are those that the Israelites would sing as they would make their yearly uh, trip to Jerusalem in order to worship God in the temple and in order to observe the feasts. These songs really were songs of meditation and their purpose was to help prepare the minds of the worshipers to be able to worship God. The interesting thing about Psalm 122 is how it falls in line with Psalm 120 and Psalm 121. In Psalm 120, the people are pictured as traveling to Jerusalem. They're on their way to be able to worship God. In Psalm 121, they arrive in the city and so they begin to rejoice because at long last they've made their destination. And now in Psalm 122, after having made the long journey and having finally arrived in the city, they are preparing to enter into the temple of God And hence the refrain at the beginning of the psalm, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It would be very difficult not to be impressed with the overwhelming joy and gladness that is associated with worship in the entirety of God's word, but particularly in the book of Psalms. Here are a few just for example. Psalm 42 and verse 4, I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise with a multitude that kept a pilgrim feast. Psalm 89, or excuse me, 98 in verse number four, shout joyfully to the Lord all the earth, break forth in song, rejoice and sing praises. Psalm 100 in verse three, enter into his courts with thanksgiving and, uh, excuse me, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Over and over again, when the Bible talks about worshiping God, the Bible describes worship in terms of joy and excitement and enthusiasm and gladness. And that really shouldn't surprise us at all. Because worshiping God is one of the greatest privileges that the people of God could possibly ever hope to enjoy. When we think about the opportunity to worship our God, we ought to say with the psalmist, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I am glad for every opportunity to worship our God. We should be glad. And I'd like this morning for us to talk a little bit about why. First of all, the reasons why we should be glad when we have an opportunity to worship God is because as we said a moment ago, worship is a privilege. When we worship God, we are allowed to enter into the presence of God. Now, it is true that worship is a command. In John 4, verse 23 and 24, you remember the passage? Jesus speaks to the woman at the well, and he says that the Father is seeking worshipers. He's seeking true worshipers. He's seeking those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. And then in Acts 20 and verse number 7, we have what constitutes a binding pattern where we find the church in the first century assembling together every first day of the week in order to worship God. So it's true that worship is a command and no one would ever reject that. But we also must recognize that just as worship is a command, it is also a privilege. It is a privilege because when we gather, when we worship God, we are again, we are allowed the ability, at least in a sense, to enter into the presence of God. Not in the sense, of course, that we're literally before him, as some might think, but rather in the sense that we as his people are gathered together to worship him. And so we have his ear and we have his attention. Listen to these passages. Psalm 100 in verse number two, the psalmist says, Come before his presence with singing. The same psalm, Psalm 100 in verse number four, the psalmist says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. And in Psalm 66 verse 13, the psalmist said, I will go into your house with thanksgiving. I want you to stop for just a moment and imagine the privilege and the grandeur of being able to come before the presence of a king. Now, in our world in the year 2020, we haven't seen much of this, 
maybe on television, maybe in movies or something. It's really not a practice uh, today as it has been in the history of our world. But I want you to just imagine for a moment, whatever picture you may have seen, reading it in a book or seeing it in a documentary, or maybe you've been privileged to see it in person. Whenever the king or whenever the queen of a nation enters into procession into uh, their throne room, all of the pageantry and all of the beauty and all of the gold and the silver and the pearls and all of these other things, we know the scene. Imagine what great privilege it must have been to have been able to have, been, to, to have received audience before the king. And then recognize that God is so much more and the privilege of being able to come before Him and His presence is even greater. Who can forget the throne room scene in Revelation chapter 4? We have a similar one in Isaiah chapter 6, but Revelation chapter 4 is particularly, uh, particularly noteworthy. You remember the scene as John describes it in that chapter, how he sees the Almighty God sitting upon the throne and how he sees around God the uh, elders and uh, the uh, various uh, beings in the heavenly realm and how they are praising him. Uh, they have been described as professional worshipers because the Bible says that they never cease praising God night and day. And brothers and sisters, there is a sense whenever we are able to worship our God, whenever we have His ear and we have His attention, that the presence and the eye of the Almighty Creator of the universe is here, focused upon us. And we should also recognize that this is a privilege that belongs exclusively to the children of God. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 5 the Apostle Peter talked about the fact that we as God's people have the ability to offer up spiritual sacrifices unto Him. When we worship God, we have the ability of approaching His throne in prayer. 1 Timothy chapter 2. We are led in prayer as a congregation by a man who is living a holy and righteous life. And the Bible describes those prayers, Revelation 5 and verse number 8, is that which comes up before God uh, as something that is sweet. We have the ability and the opportunity to commune with our Lord and one another. 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 16, Matthew chapter 26 and verse 29. We have the opportunity to hear a message from the Word of God who has chosen to communicate with us. Colossians 3 and verse number 6. We can give of our means in order to further His work. 1 Corinthians 16 verse 1 and 2. We are able to sing praise and exalt Him. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse number 19. When we think about the actions and when we think about the opportunity for worship, we have to recognize the privilege we have to recognize how special and how wonderful it really is to be able as children of God to offer up unto our Creator and our Redeemer the praise and the honor that He deserves. We should be glad whenever we have an opportunity to worship because of the privilege of worship. But we should be glad also, building on the first point, we should be glad when we're able to worship God because we are able to give God what He deserves. Let me ask you a question. What is worship anyway? How do you define it? If you were to break down the English word worship, literally the idea is worth-ship. That is, we are expressing the greatness or the value of God in our worship. In both the Old and New Testaments, the Hebrew and the Greek words that are translated as worship or have something to do with worship, they both indicate the practice of prostrating or bowing down before the one who is being worshipped. So when we worship God, we bow before His presence and we offer unto Him the glory that is due to His name. There are a number of different designations in God's Word, a number of different descriptive terms, if you will, for worship. Let me share some of them with you. When we worship God, we glorify God. Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 16. When we worship God, we express awe of Him. Psalm 33 and verse number 8. When we worship God, we magnify God. Psalm 35 and verse 27. When we worship God, we honor Him. Isaiah 29 and verse 13. We praise Him. Luke 19 and verse 37. We exalt Him. 
Psalm 18 and verse 46. And we thank Him. Luke 17 and verse number 16. I want you to think of Hebrews chapter 13 and verse number 15 for just a moment. It is a passage I know that we are all familiar with where the Hebrews writer talks about the practice of bringing before God the sacrifice of praise and offering unto Him the fruit of our lips. I want you to think for a moment about the terminology that the Hebrews writer uses in that passage. Notice when he talks about giving our praise, he describes it as the sacrifice of praise. We ought to be glad when we're able to come into the house of the Lord and bow before Him in worship because we're able to give God what He deserves. But giving God what He deserves means that it's going to, co that it's going to cost me something. In Deuteronomy chapter 16 and verse number 16, as the law of Moses outlines the responsibility of the children of Israel to observe the feasts that happen throughout the year, there is an important uh, statement, a uh, command in the 16th verse of that chapter, and here it is. God told the men when they come to Jerusalem to observe the feast, do not come empty-handed. Well, why should they not come empty-handed? Well, the reason is because they were going before God to worship Him, and worship involves, Hebrews 13, verse 15, the sacrifice of praise. I wonder, when we come to worship our God, do we ever come empty-handed? Or do we come with our hands full, ready to offer Him the sacrifice of praise? Ready to offer Him our attention whenever His Word is being proclaimed? Ready to sing to Him with the best of our voice, and to praise His name when we sing songs together. Ready to concentrate and think about the sacrifice of Christ on the cross when we observe the Lord's Supper. Ready to sacrificially give something so that the church, the work of God, might be able to continue on. Ready to focus whenever we offer our hearts and our petitions up to Him in prayer. When we come to worship, if we come empty-handed, there's no way that we can give, give God what He deserves. And if we come empty-handed and we're not giving God what He deserves, there's no way that we'll ever truly be able to say, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Why do we come before God and offer the sacrifice of praise anyway? The answer is because of who He is. In John chapter 4 and verse number 24, the Bible says that God is spirit and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. We come before our God and we worship Him and we honor and praise and exalt and thank Him and glorify Him. And the reason is because He is our Creator. Psalm 100 in verse number 3. We are His people and we are the sheep of His pasture. It is He who hath made us. We come before God and we offer Him the sacrifice of praise because He is great. Psalm 48 in verse number 1 says, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. When we come to worship God, when we come to offer Him the sacrifice of praise, to give Him all that we can, the glory and the honor that is due His name, we recognize that we're doing so because we are worshiping a God who loves and who cares and who provides. We are worshiping a God who sees and who knows all. We are worshiping a God who is merciful and who is long-suffering and who is gracious. And the list of God's wonderful characteristics could continue to go on and on. Our God is worthy. He is worthy of our worship and He is worthy of our praise. And one additional point. I want you to look at Psalm 103 with me just for a moment. I want you to think for, with me about all of these great characteristics of God and then think about how those wonderful characteristics of God are to our benefit. Listen to Psalm 103. We won't look at the whole psalm, but let's notice just a few passages. The psalmist begins, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. And you might make a mark or a notation in your notes or in your Bible that the psalmist in this passage is speaking in the imperative. He's giving, this is command language. When he says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, verse number 2, verse 1 and 2. These are not suggestions. These are commands. And then look at the last part of verse 2. Why are we blessing the Lord? 
and forget not all of his benefits. And then for the remainder of this psalm, he'll go on to describe what those benefits are. He heals, uh, forgives our iniquities and heals our diseases. He redeems your life from destruction. He crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. He satisfies your mouth with good things. The Lord executes righteousness and justice, verse number 6. His mercy is great, verse number 11. And on and on the Lord goes, or the, psalm, the psalmist goes. We come before God to worship Him and offer Him the sacrifice of praise. We give Him the glory and the honor that's due to His name. And we do it from a heart that ought to be full of gratitude and full of thanksgiving. And the reason is because we think about the greatness and the majesty of our God and we see how though our God is great and greatly to be praised, yet He has been great and good unto us. And so we worship Him and we honor Him for it. And when we give Him what He deserves in the way that He desires, it's well-pleasing in His sight. Leviticus chapter 1 and verse number 9 is one of the important principles of sacrifice found in that book. And the Bible tells us in that passage that when the worshiper under the law of Moses would come before God and would offer his sacrifice in the way that God had commanded the sacrifice to be given, that it would go up before the Lord as a sweet-smelling savor. Worship, of course, as we well know, is not a free-for-all. It's not something that is left up to our own imagination, but rather God has requirements that are to be met. We can't offer strange fire like Nadab and Abihu in Leviticus 10 or will worship like those in Colossians 2 and verse number 23 and expect to be acceptable before God. But when we come before Him in the way that He desires and in the way that He deserves, He will be pleased. He will be glorified. And in that case, we can say, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Let me suggest one more reason. We ought to be glad for the opportunity to worship because it's a privilege to worship and because we're able to give God what He deserves. But number three, we ought to be glad because we are privileged and able to do it together. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 19. John says... We are of God, and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. May I ask, who is the we in 1 John 5 and verse 19? Listen to 1 John 1 and verse 3. That which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you may also have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. When John says in 1 John 5, 19, we are of God, he's talking about those who walk in the light and have fellowship with God and one another. He's talking about those who are faithful New Testament Christians, just like those of us who are gathered in this room and in this building this morning. The Bible describes the opportunity in terms of gathering with those who are of like precious faith, 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 1. And the Bible says that when we worship God, our worship not only has a vertical component, that is, our praise going upward to God, but it also has a horizontal component, that is, the effect, the benefit that it has on one another. Hebrews 10 verse 25, the Bible warns us against forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, but the passage also talks about how we are to exhort and to build one another up even so much more as we see the day approaching. Worship is an opportunity for the children of God to build one another up. Colossians 3 and verse number 16, the Bible talks about our worship in song and says that one of the things that we do is that we teach and we admonish one another. Go read Acts chapter 2 and verse 44 and following, and what you'll find is that the church was together. They were together with one mind and one mouth that they might glorify God together. Romans chapter 15 and verse number 6. And our bond, our tie as brothers and sisters and members of the family of God, it's a beautiful bond and a privileged bond that the world cannot understand. And if I'm being honest... Until recently, I didn't realize just how powerful and how much of a treasure it was either. So when we say or when we have the opportunity and the ability to worship, we ought with the psalmist to say, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Because it's a privilege and because we give God what He deserves and because we are allowed to do it together as brothers and sisters in Christ. Those who love one another and care for one another, 
those who desire to be together both here and in eternity. So let us with excitement and enthusiasm at every opportunity for worshiping God express the sentiments of Psalm 122 in verse 1. Joy and gladness and excitement. I was glad when they said to me, let's go into the house of the Lord. Lesson is yours this morning. We're going to offer an invitation. It may be that there's someone here today that has need to respond, perhaps to become a child of God. Perhaps rather, perhaps you are a child of God, a New Testament Christian, but maybe you're struggling in your life. Perhaps it's sin. Perhaps it's discouragement or depression. Or perhaps there are simply some questions, some things that you're working through and dealing with and you'd like prayer and guidance and encouragement and strength to be able to deal with it. The Lord's invitation is offered and it'd be our privilege to help. If you have need, won't you come forward and let it be known while we stand and sing together. Hark in the loving call, obey, come for he loves you so. Only a step, only a step, come for he bled for you and I. He's the same loving Savior yet. Jesus the crucified, casting your heavy burden down, come to the cross, the world may frown, yet you shall wear a glorious crown, when he makes up his own. same loving Savior yet, Jesus the crucified, open for you the pearly gate, loved ones for you, now watch and wait, terrible thought to cry to Jesus, I come to Thee. Only a step, only a step, come for He bled for you and died. He's the same loving Savior yet, Jesus the Christ. song this morning will be song number 638 638 the lord has been mindful of me we'll sing all the verses once again and we'll have a closing prayer of our brother josh piscina though i through the valley of shadow or mountain or troubled sea and oft in the darkness have traveled, the Lord has been mindful of me. The Lord has been mindful of me. He blesses and blesses again. My God is the God of the living. How excellent is His name. Much more than my grief and my sorrow, much more than adversity, much more than the all I have given, the Lord has been mindful of me. The Lord has been mindful of me. He blesses and blesses again. My 
Thy God is the God of the living. How excellent is his name. I'm rich, I am saved, I am happy. I have health and prosperity. I friends, I have doors ever open. The Lord has been mindful of me. The Lord has been mindful of me. He blesses and blesses again. My God is the God of the living. How excellent is his name. Will you pray with me? Our most righteous Heavenly Father, we come before you thanking you for another Lord's Day that we can come into this building, God, and sing praises unto your name, learn more about your word. Heavenly Father, we pray that you be with all those who are ill, any of those grieving at this time. Heavenly Father, we are thankful for your son, Jesus, who died on the cross and washed away our sins. We pray, God, that you be with us through, the, through this week till we meet again. We pray all this in your son's name. Amen.